Hey beauties, and welcome to my first Halloween tutorial for the month of October. There will be many more to come, so be sure to subscribe now. I thought I would start this month off with something classic that screams Halloween, and what better than The Bride of Frankenstein. The Bride of Frankenstein was filmed in 1935 and is an iconic sci-fi horror film that can be recognized by just about everyone. This film can only be seen in black and white, and we will never actually know what colors she was wearing. As said, she is entirely made of flaws but stitched together with good intentions. Today I'm going to show you my take on the classic and iconic horror film character, The Bride of Frankenstein. So to start this look out, we're going to be blocking out our brows using a washable glue stick. Just apply this to the edges of your eyebrows and comb the hairs up using a spoolie. You want these hairs to lay straight and flat. You can keep applying this glue until it feels pretty flat and to check on it, apply a translucent powder over the brows if you can see any lines or the powders caking up into the hairs. Go back in with a few more layers of that glue and clean up with a makeup wipe as you go. To conceal the brows, I go in with the Marc Jacobs Remarkable Foundation and then MAC Shivering White Face Powder. To start the brows, begin by filling in where your natural brow starts and just pull the color straight back towards your ears. You can fill them in however you'd like, but in the movie her brows are pinned straight. And to fill them in, I'm just using a pomade and then a black eyeshadow to add in definition. For the eyes, the first thing you're going to want to do is prime and set your lids with a powder to make sure the eyeshadow lasts and blends easier. For shadow, I'm using the Tartlet palette because it's very cool tone and perfect for this look. You can also use a purple or gray shadow as well. I'm taking the shade Best Friend and applying this above my actual crease and just mapping out where I want my cut crease to go. To cut the crease, take the shade Bombshell or a dark purple eyeshadow and begin to define the line. Taking the Tarte Shape Tape Concealer in Fair, I'm going to cut the lid up against a line and set it with MAC Shivering White Face Powder. For the wing, I'm using the NYX Cosmetics Matte Liquid Liner and creating a dramatic wing, leaving the cut crease open. After, I'm just going to apply some mascara to my lashes and go ahead and apply your favorite lashes of choice. For this look, I'm using the Coco Lashes in the Style Goddess. Now to get started on this face, prime that skin with something that's going to moisturize it and keep it feeling soft because we're going for a very matte look that requires a lot of powder, so just make sure that you prime with something very hydrating. For the white base, I'm using NYX Cosmetics Stay Matte Not Flat Foundation and mixing it with the white foundation mixer. This is very white and a combo I use for a lot of looks that require me to look like a ghost. I use the same combo in my Harley Quinn makeup tutorial and it works great. For highlight under the eyes, I'm going into MAC Shivering White again and applying this right underneath my eyes. This is another favorite of mine for ghost pale looks because it's white enough to highlight and conceal with. For contour, I'm using the Lunatic Labs Contour Palette and I'm taking a lavender shade first and applying this to the hollows of my cheeks. I'm going for a dead look, so I'm using more grays and purples to contour instead of the normal warm bronzer shades you would use on an everyday basis. After I've applied the lavender, I'm going in with a gray cement color and applying this right at the front of my ears and bringing this forward to make myself look skinnier and dead. I brought this down around my mouth as well to thin out my nose. I just use the same exact shades. Moving back to the eyes, I'm taking the shade Force of Nature from the Tartlet palette, but you can also use a light taupe brown, and I'm just buffing this into the lower lash line. Next, I'm going to take a black to create the bottom wing. I pretty much just lined it up with the wing on my lid and made it sharp and shoot straight out. Lastly, to finish off the eyes, I always like to apply some mascara to my lower lashes. For lips, I'm taking this Ombre Lip Duo by NYX, and I'm taking the black side first, lining the lips, and then filling in the corners of my lips. Then I'm going to take the red side, and I'm going to fill in the center of my lips, which will create that ombre effect. I also took the shade Perfect Red by NYX, which is a much lighter, brighter red, and I filled in the center as well, just to add some more color. So to map out the stitches, take a white liner and draw two lines connecting from the front of your ears down to your jawline and under back around to the back of your ears. I brought mine out a little more than the brides because I really wanted them to be seen more. You can do them however you'd like though. After I mapped them out, I started mixing parts A and B of third degree, which is an SFX type of silicone molding compound, perfect for scars or stitches. 
After I mix equal parts of both, I'm applying this onto the stitch lines with a spatula. I first went over with a thin layer and then added a bit more. Wait a minute or two until it's tacky and almost set, and then go back in with the spatula, cutting directly down the middle of the third degree. So now for the body, I'm using Mehron Paradise Paint in white and apply this all over your chest area and your arms. This works like a charm and is very easy to apply. You can control the consistency of this with water so you can make it as creamy or watery as you need it to be. It's so perfect for Halloween looks. I'm going to contour my chest a little bit as well to make myself look a little skinnier and dead. And to that, I'm using a dark gray purple shade from the Lunatic Labs Contour Palette, the same palette I used on my face. When contouring your chest, just suck in a little bit and feel around, feel your bones, and wherever your bone is, contour up against it and you will get the same effect. Everybody's body is different, so you have to kind of feel around a bit and shade where you feel it's needed. For the body stitches, I did them the same way I did my facial stitches. I just mapped them out and then also applied the third degree molding compound. The way I did the arm stitches complements the costume because my costume has some slits in the arm area so it will really showcase these stitches, but feel free to do them however you'd like and whatever pattern you desire. To fill in the stitches, I went in with a thin lip brush and a brown grease paint. I filled the line in that we cut straight down into, and this will add a lot of depth to the stitch. After I filled in with the brown, I went back in with a maroon shade right over the top just to lighten it up a little bit. Taking a brush, I'm going to rub up against the grease paint and around the stitch line to create some irritation. This is going to make it look infected and irritated, and in all actuality, if you were stitched together, you aren't going to look perfectly stitched. There would probably be some irritation around those stitches. To set the grease paint, I just went over the top of the stitches with a translucent powder to prevent any bleeding or moving around of the product. So now I'm going to begin applying the stitches. I first am laying down some liquid latex with a spoolie and then placing some double knotted thread over the top and spreading out into an X. I pre-knotted these stitches and real stitches are double knotted. They look a lot like this. If you want to look legit, use real thread. This tutorial really does not give it justice compared to how it looks in person. It's disgustingly real, I must say. It just looks so real. Also make sure that you trim the thread pretty short. I'm just using a small pair of scissors to cut that thread. So for the wig, I bought a wig from Amazon that was a reasonable price. I'll link it below for you guys. It was a very curly black wig. I knew I was never going to get the look I wanted unless I did this myself, and I couldn't help but laugh my butt off at how I looked at this point. Oh my gosh, you could probably use this wig if you wanted to be Jigsaw from Saw, but that's just me. Anyways, I first braided the top a bit and then I wrapped that braid around on the top of the wig and I pinned it down into the wig. Then I took a Pepsi bottle that is cut in half and I pinned that right up against the braid. This is a similar technique that you use when you're trying to create that Cindy Lou Who hair from The Grinch Who Stole Christmas, it's the same exact thing. I recommend getting someone to help you pin the top of the hair because it is very hard to reach. In this case, I had my mom help me. For the white pieces on the side of her hair, I used some clip-in extensions I've had for years from way back in the day when I had blonde hair. I sprayed them with some white hair color. You can pick this up at Spirit of Halloween. And then I clipped them under the wig and pinned them up. Super simple and easy to do. As for my costume, I actually got this at the Spirit of Halloween, and this is a mummy costume. I thought it would look great with this look, make it look more modern, and as for the bolts, also bought them at Spirit and I cut them off the plastic band and just attached them using some Spirit gum. And this is my final look on The Bride of Frankenstein. I hope you guys enjoyed my take on this classic horror film character. Make sure you like this video if you did enjoy it and subscribe for more Halloween looks coming from me. Or else. Mwahahaha. I'm just kidding. But thanks for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.